In this video we're going to look at OpenZeus 11.3, it's just been released. This is the KDE Live CD I'm showing you right now, and we're going to go straight for the install. Single click at the moment, so just click it once. If you've got less than 1GB of RAM it will tell you that, this is being run in a virtual machine. With 768 megs of RAM. It runs fine though. Standard Yast installer hasn't really changed much from the older versions. I'm just going to do some partitioning here. I don't want a separate home partition on an 8 gigabyte disk. And I'm going to change the second partition, the root partition, to JFS. Yes. And that's the partitioning done. Again, the same as the old version. Now, when, when it says about the um, settings being changed, this will come up. We'll just click No there. That's a little bit funny why, why that's there, but it doesn't happen on the DVD. And we'll have our ultra secure password. And we'll use it for the system administrator and we'll have auto log on. Now by default it doesn't want to boot from the MBR which is a bit silly so we'll enable that. And we'll turn off booting from the root partition. And that's all ok so we'll just click install now. Very much like the old versions of OpenSUSE, but there's a couple of little things on there which need to be fixed. Anyway, we'll just let that install and we'll come back to it once it's up and running. The same as with 11.2, once it's rebooted it will configure your computer. It does the automatic configuration which sets up your hardware, your drivers and your network devices. Once it's done this you'll be able to log in for the first time, though it can take quite a while even on a fast computer. The system is installed now and as you'll notice it's set up the repositories during the install time. When they did the automatic configuration it set up the repos. There are updates already and this thing only came out less than a week ago. But they're not updates to the software that's included, they're actually optional updates. As you can see here it wants to install Flash and it wants to install the Microsoft fonts and the hardware profiling sort of thing. So we'll just let those install. It's going to ask for our secure password of 123456. And of course there's a user license agreement to Flash. This is why it's not part of the actual install because it's closed source. And the same for the Microsoft fonts. And just like before the updater is exactly the same. I think it's been exactly the same since around 10.1 or something. It's always had that little thing down there. And when the arrows are green, that means that the updates are complete. You can, of course, click on it and it will show you what it's doing, but it's not very descriptive. It's really best just to have it down there because it's no more descriptive there than it is up here. Once, the, once those are installed we'll have a look around the system and see what software is included. It's much like the older version but a bit more polished, newer software and it seems a lot faster. The updates are installed now. It's actually hidden the updater. There it is. As you can see the arrows are green now so it's totally up to date. And the first thing I'm going to do is change it to the classic menu. And that's that hardware profiler that it just installed. I'm going to click Don't Ask again. And there's the classic menu. As with OpenSUSE, it always has a recently installed at the top, which is a Flash player. Let's just have a look at Yast. And because it's an administrator pass program, we've got to put in our password. And yes, it's pretty much the same as always. There may be one or two new things on it, but I would never use them anyway, so I can't tell you exactly what's new on there, if anything. 
it looks pretty much the same as the old version. Let's launch some programs like Firefox. And it is the latest version at the moment, but when it does become out of date, just add the Mozilla repo like I showed you in the last video. The live CD comes with quite a bit of software installed. You've got the usual KDE games, the GIMP, some other stuff that I've never used. It's still got conversation. A lot of other distros has changed to Quasel or however you're supposed to pronounce it. There's a lot of open source software with funny names. Conquer is included with Firefox. Now this is personal preference but really I don't think that Conqueror should be included at all now. You've got Dolphin for file management and it's a lot nicer than Conqueror in my opinion. Kmail for an email, Ktorrent, all the usual stuff that you'd find in a KDE distro. There's nothing sort of new as such with this OpenSUSE, but it's sort of like a refined version of the previous release, which is 11.2. It's got newer software, it seems to be faster, KMS works great. If I install it on my computer, I don't have to install the ATR drivers anymore, it works fine. I've got a 4850 and I don't have to install the drivers, even, even games work. I mean, I'm not talking about Crisis or anything, obviously, because I run Windows for stuff like that, but... The open source games, they're not brilliant, but they run without drivers now. So that's good. Well, I say without drivers, obviously I mean the open source drivers. I mean I don't have to install any other drivers. But yeah, there isn't so much to show you on this. I mean, the best thing for you to do would be install it yourself, have a look at it and see what you think. If you like the last version, you'll really like this one. As I said, it's got newer software. It's more up to date. It should work with more hardware. And it's definitely faster on my computer it definitely was when I installed it but yeah give it a try for yourself especially if you use the old version it's a really nice release really polished the, the default artwork is nice and as always I recommend OpenSUSE really good distro anyway I'll see you in the next video